Now, talking about dams that could save us from flooding, Sydney has its Warragamba, Brisbane has its Wyvernhoe. And that Brisbane dam, Wyvernhoe, didn't do a great job saving the city from the 2011 floods, and it barely coped this time. Joining me is the Australian newspaper's Hedley Thomas, who I think is one of the country's finest investigative reporters and has studied the failings back in 2011 in some brilliant reporting. Hedley, always great to catch up with you. Now, listen, um, you say in your article in the Australian newspaper today that Brisbane got very lucky this time. Why do you say that? Hi, Andrew, and thanks for having me. Yes, uh, I believe that's right, and I think the statistics bear that out. The uh, rainfall across the catchment was intense. It was severe, extreme, as predicted by the Bureau. Uh, the dam operators d don't make preemptive releases. They've effectively forbidden um, themselves from doing that, even when there are such extreme rainfall forecasts. So the rain duly came, dumping literally you know, metres of rain before it reached uh, our catchment, and the dam began to fill very rapidly. Uh, the flood storage capacity was just about uh, used up when on Sunday afternoon, and I can only imagine the panic that must have been unfolding in the flood operations centre and at high levels of government, the, uh, the weather system that was producing this phenomenal rain uh, started to move away, began to ease. Even so, the level of the dam went up to over 74 and a half metres, which was pretty close to the level at which they began panicking in 2011 and releasing massive amounts from the dam, which did comprise most of the Brisbane River flood in 2011. They had to release that water back then, otherwise the dam's integrity was at stake. So I think uh, many people now question why have a dam that doesn't respond to the Bureau of Meteorology's grave, severe, uh, extreme weather forecasts of intense rain? Why not give yourself a larger buffer by releasing water early? But uh, uh, that's a debate that, that uh, will, will play out. Now, I get the, uh, you know, the dilemma here that uh, Australian cities, we don't have enough dams, basically. We stop building uh, dams, essentially, for city water. And if they let out too much water and uh, they miscalculate, then they run the risk of cities running dry, which is even worse than flooding. But if this rain had not stopped, what would have happened to Brisbane? Andrew, if the rain had stayed around just a few more hours, um, three or four hours, dumping at the intensity we saw in Brisbane through that Sunday early afternoon, then the, uh, the, the gates would have had to have been um, opened and um, phenomenal releases of water in excess of 6,000 cubic metres per second would have had to be released. In 2011, the peak flow from the dam, that is the, the water that the engineers operating the dam released when they were concerned they were going to lose uh, parts of the dam wall known as the fuse plugs, was over 7,000 cubic metres a second. Now, that is an extraordinary flow of water. That, that is uh, and ended up being um, the most significant part of the flooding of Brisbane. If that, those surges hadn't been released, Brisbane in 2011 would not have been underwater or would have only been moderately underwater. But it was the releases from the dam that, that drowned the city to a large extent. So, you know, I think the argument that, 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 that I've made and that others are making is the rain is coming. We know it's coming. We all rely on weather forecasts to make adjustments, just as we should rely on um, dire warnings of extreme dry to clear bush so that we don't burn to death. Why would you operate a dam, the most Brilliant powerful... Brilliant analogy. The most, the, the, the most powerful and most dangerous and valuable piece of public infrastructure in the state of Queensland uh, without regard to weather forecasts. 
dire weather forecast. And that, even in Headley, that is precisely the case. Your analogy with the lack of clear burning is is perfect. And also, I'll underline your point. This is an El Nino year where we were warned way in advance that you would get much more rain than normal because El Nino is where the ocean patterns change and you've got hot, warm water sitting off the continent. Headley Thomas, keep at it. You've really nailed this one. Thank you so much for your time.